So why Bohem? But, uh, because there's something about it I think that appeals to absolutely everybody, young or old. Um, it's yeah, it's uh, incredibly beautiful music. It's incredibly it's beautiful music. It's a timeless music. It's story. Really. Absolutely timeless. You know, some operas uh, you could set uh, on the moon, and some operas you can't because they're really time and place specific. But actually, Bohème, you probably could set it on the moon. You could set it almost any place, any time, and it would still be relevant. Absolutely. And there'll always be young people, and people, I hope, will always fall in love in some way. Because in a way, you could say that the opera's about many things, but in a way, you could say it's, it's about the, the end of youth. You know, and we've sort of known each other from, you know, the early days where we sort of we live very similar lives to the people in the piece where we'd live on baked beans and give everything to our work and the work, you know, and that we were, had, you know, great conviction, which we absolutely still have. And, um, but it's sort of, you know, but now sort of uh, to have a way of sort of pushing some of that in the piece, perhaps, you know, it just feels sort of quite sort of personal, personal in a way. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, but it, I mean, it's the most fantastic uh, music, and it does speak of a kind of youthful vitality, I think, absolutely. The journey of Mimi, that's a very possible thing that could happen now. You know, people get sick, people, uh, people die, unfortunately, when they could have been saved. Um, the psychology of the piece uh, is very, very relevant. Um, so why, you know, you say why do it now, but also why do it in period? I don't, and and I think for the people who come and see the show, they're not going to see something that's brutally modernised, you know, where we throw the piece out the window. I think it's a kind of very lyrical, very romantic idea of the present. Um, yeah, we create we create our own version of the present, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, um, it's not mundane in any way. Um, it's energetic and colourful and incredibly vibrant. Mm. One of the reasons why, why um, I've, I've set or I've, I've organised for me, me to, to, to be a homeless girl at the beginning is because I've worked with homeless people in London and I know um, how, in fact, our, our, our main, our, our, uh, Mimi is, is, uh, is a Russian singer, Olesia Golovneva, and we're playing her as a Russian immigrant in Paris. She's an Eastern European who has come to Paris looking for a better life. I've worked with, or I've, I've helped some of these people in London, and um, it's it's absolutely terrifying to see people travel hundreds and thousands of miles in look of a better, in, in search of a better life, and they find themselves on the street without any of the support systems that they might have had at home, unloved. And in London, certainly, many of them is tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is really on the increase in London. It's one of the, the great um, uh, dangers at the moment. Um, so uh, uh, I, I think it's utterly um, uh, relevant for us to have a, uh, have a very contemporary look at it and for audience members to see. It's completely credible. Um, Puccini's really good at, at painting very, very real mm -hmm. worlds. And those real worlds, whether they're set in 1830 or 2014, um, they 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 resonate with audiences. Um, yeah, it's it's the best. Yeah.